Hello from San Miguel de Allende. In this video, we're going to be telling you some things you need to know before coming to the city. Especially if you want to enjoy more of your trip. We perfectly know that you might heard that Guanajuato is one of the most dangerous states here in Mexico. And San Miguel... Don't shoot! <laughs> oh, it was so relieved to figure out. <laughs> no, so you might have just heard those rockets going off and they are they, shotguns. They're, 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 <laughs> they're not gunshots. They're like fireworks basically basically big bottle rockets going off. <laughs> but San Miguel is located in the state of Guanajuato, which as Mai was saying is one of the most dangerous places in the country. However, San Miguel is actually reasonably safe. To arrive safely from Querétaro, you can come two ways. The first one is by car. If you're coming by car, we recommend you to come during the day. It's like an hour, 45 minutes trip. If you're coming by bus, uh, the ticket, it might cost around 100 pesos, 90 pesos, and it's pretty safe. If you're coming from other places in Mexico, you can arrive by bus as well. That's usually a pretty good option. And if you're coming from the US or Canada, you can fly in Mexico City or fly into Querétaro and take private transportation or a bus from there to San Miguel. And on the topic of safety, if you're coming to San Miguel, it's pretty safe to be in this city but there are a lot of trips you might want to take, like to vineyards or maybe to hot springs or other nearby cities. Well, since we're in one of the most dangerous states in the country, I would recommend you get the advice from locals, maybe your Airbnb host of the place you're staying at, to find out if it's safe to travel to whatever place you want to visit. Something you're going to want to do in San Miguel if you're shopping for local artisan products is to shop around and compare prices at various stores. My, you had an experience with this yesterday. Yeah, for example, I was looking for a hat and I totally recommend you to look and at several of the stores because you can find the same kind of hat, like double of the price. So don't stay with the first thing you saw. Try to compare and try to find the best option for you. And if you want to find good prices on local artisan products, Head on over to Mercado de Artesanías. It's not a far walk from Centro, from the parroquia, but the prices you're going to find in here are way better than around the main square in town. Before coming to Mexico, one of the pieces of advice I was given was to negotiate for everything here, that it's very much a haggling culture and people negotiate for everything. Well, as it turns out, this put me into a lot of awkward situations because this was kind of bad advice. For example, I started negotiating uh, for the price of a cup of fruit from a fruit vendor and you never negotiate for street food. That's just not something anybody does here. When it comes to shopping for artesanías though, uh, it's a little bit more complicated about when it's acceptable to negotiate or not. But in general, a good idea I think to like get a fair price for you and for the vendor is if you think it's a fair price, just pay the price. But if not, well then maybe you walk away or you say uh, voy a checar or déjeme pensarlo and déjeme checar. One of these phrases is going to like inform the vendor that hey I'm going to think about it, I'm going to shop around, uh, voy a comparar, I'm going to compare as in I'm going to compare with other stores to see if I think this is a good value and if there's room for the price to come down a lot of times right then they'll be like okay how about 400 pesos instead of 500 pesos and here in San Miguel I think it's generally a very good idea to shop around when you're uh, looking for these artisan products for example my girlfriend was shopping for a hat yesterday she went into one store and a hat was about a thousand pesos then she went into another store and the same hat or a very similar hat was half the price so it definitely pays to shop around a little bit look at various stores you're probably going to get a better idea of prices and come to a more fair deal for both yourself and for the vendors another thing you should do is to arrive early in the morning especially if you're coming from friday to sunday because mm -hmm. it's going to be crowded 
Yeah, and parking is pretty limited in this city. Like there is street parking, like you can see behind us here, there's some cars parked on the street, but it is really hard to find parking on the street here. So then you'll have to go to a paid parking lot. And I would have thought that, oh, there will be plenty of space in the paid parking lot. But I remember coming to San Miguel once, driving a car here from Queretaro, and having to go to like nine different paid parking lots before we were able to find one that had space available. Another thing that happened to me is that once I tried to come here and the same happened. We were going all around the city trying to find a parking place. We also tried at the parking paid uh, yeah. places and we couldn't never find a place to park so unfortunately we had to go back to Querétaro because it was oh. too hard to find a parking place so yeah we couldn't stay yeah that really sucks if you ever find yourself in a similar position I recommend you go to La Fabrica Aurora there's usually extra parking spaces available there or take your car to a fancy hotel like the Rosewood and valet your car there. It might be a little bit more expensive than the other paid parking lots, but your car will be secure and you'll be able to actually park your car so you don't have to go back to Queretaro. <laughs> Something about San Miguel is you're at pretty high elevation here. It's 1,900 meters or 6,200 feet above sea level. So because of the higher elevation, that means that atmosphere is thinner and you're going to sunburn more easily. So be sure to bring with you a shade or a hat or something to protect you from the sun. I'm not protected. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I know. Protect me, my. <laughs> and also be sure to apply sunscreen all the time. Uh, dermatologists recommend to apply the sunscreen every four hours. So you should bring it in your purse or something you, so you can be applying it every four to six hours. Something I highly recommend when you come to San Miguel is to just stroll up and down all the streets, see the beautiful facades, see the gorgeous architecture and uh, this beautiful UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are so many awesome views and really cool things to see and great places to take pictures and all sorts of things like that. So walk around the city and just soak it all in when you're here. You can see all the crowds around us right now and that's because we're here on a Sunday and on the weekends here it gets really busy and your hotel room is going to cost a lot more. So if possible I recommend coming during the weekdays from Monday to Friday because you're going to be fighting a lot fewer crowds there's going to be a lot more space available at restaurants, things like that. And your trip is going to be a little bit cheaper because your hotel is less expensive. San Miguel has a great restaurant scene and has tons of awesome places to eat. But I recommend you do not skip the street food because the street food can save you a ton of money and can be really tasty as well. Something that you should notice when you are looking for some street food is to be sure that the place where you're going to buy something is super crowded. So that's yeah. going to mean that place is pretty good. If the place is empty, avoid it, keep looking. <laughs> So that's something, or there's no better thing that talks better about a place of food is the, the a lot of people that is eating there. Yeah, exactly. That's basically Google Maps in Mexico. <laughs> so like the Google reviews, you don't have Google reviews for street carts. So basically just more people, the closer to five stars it is. <laughs> I think we should go get some ice cream. Yeah. Since this ice cream place is really busy, that's where we're going to go. En vaso, por favor. Yo quiero de garambullo y tienes maracuyá. Uh, mandarina. Mandarina, por favor. ¿Y el otro de qué sería? Uh, por favor, me das un vaso grande con coco y galleta Oreo. We finally got our, our ice creams. I asked for tangerine dress. <laughs> no, the tang tangerine ice cream. I want a tangerine dress. <laughs> you didn't catch the message? Just kidding. Uh, I, I asked for a tangerine ice cream, which is actually mandarina. So I'm going to try it right now. And the other one you got, I'm really interested in. You said it was garambuyo. Yeah, the second flavor I asked for, I'm going to show you when I'm there, is garambuyo. I have no idea what garambuyo is in English, but you said it comes from a cactus? 
Yeah, Garambuyo is actually the fruit of a cactus that uh, is a native from the north and central part of Mexico. Okay. So I really love that flavor because it's actually like a blueberry, but its flavor is kind of different. I'm, I, I think Garambuyo has more flavor than blueberry and you can just find it in this period of the year. So if you're so like July. this month, yeah, like the time where it's raining a lot, you should try Garambuyo because instead you're going, you will have to wait for a year to try it again. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I'm hoping you let me try it once you get down to that. Mm. And in mine, I got cookies and cream and coconut. Ma, you, you didn't wear any tangerine clothes today, so is that why you got tangerine ice cream? I'm actually wearing a little bit tangerine on my sneakers, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody's gonna know it. <laughs> I was thinking that it's ice cream, it's not pretty sweet. So I'm loving it and it's so refreshing. It's actually like having like a frozen mandarina juice. So I'm thinking that with a shot of the tequila, this would be the perfect margarita. <laughs> <laughs> so I just finished my cookies and cream and now I'm down to the coconut. I'll give this a try. Mm, that is so refreshing and there's real pieces of coconut in it. Mm, I love it. You're down to your garambuyo? Yeah, I finally ate all my tangerine ice cream. And I arrived to garambuyo. I'm gonna show you this. Because I especially love this color. It's amazing. And I'm realizing that this ice cream actually has um, very big uh, pieces of the fruit. So I'm really oh. enjoying it. Do you wanna try? Yeah. Okay. I've never tried this fruit before. Okay, it's really good, it's really flavorful. I'm trying to think if it's like a flavor I know, but I can't think of anything. To me, it doesn't taste like blueberry. It doesn't taste like a blueberry at all. I mean, if you look and you search Garambuyo, the fruit is similar to blueberry, but its flavor, it's not like a blueberry at all. Okay. It's like, um, I don't know if some day you have tried tuna, which is like another fruit from cactus. Yeah. But I think the taste is so similar, like tuna, like mm. the red tuna. And we're not talking about red tuna fish, we're talking about a little fruit that comes from a cactus. But I think this has more flavor. But yeah, the interesting thing it like it's that it looks like a blueberry. Also, I can say that garambuyo. Yeah. One thing, red tuna. Are you thinking of pataya? No, no, no. No. They are like two different ty kinds of tunas. The red tuna, which color is similar to garambuyo, and the green tuna. That okay. are the ones that you can find easily, like okay. everywhere. Okay, I see green tuna everywhere. Like you can buy a whole bushel of them for like a dollar or two. They're 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 so cheap on the side of the road. Yeah, red tuna for me are better. It has more flavor, but they are not easy to find. Mm. So if someday you find a place where they sell like red tuna, try it. <laughs> it's worth it. So nearby San Miguel, there's a lot of pretty cool places to visit. For example, there's quite a few vineyards around. Do you remember the name of that place that you really wanted to go to? Ah, yes, uh, Viñedo Tres Raíces. It's oh. a half an hour away from San Miguel Centro. Yeah, and yesterday we went to Hacienda San Jose La Vista, which is another really cool vineyard, super pretty out there. But there's also hot springs and grutas. There's a lot of stuff to see nearby. And about an hour away is the town of Dolores Hidalgo, which is actually the birthplace of Mexico. So if you're interested in history, you might want to check out Dolores. When visiting San Miguel, you'll find that most of the restaurants here do accept cards and most of them accept all cards, including American Express. However, Discover card is super rare to be accepted in Mexico, so you usually can't pay with Discover. However, you will find that there are a lot of shops here and taxis and things where you need cash. So in order to get cash in pesos, I recommend, if you can, to get a Charles Schwab investor checking account because with one of these checking accounts, you get unlimited ATM fee rebates worldwide and you get charged no ATM fees either. 
So at the end of every month, any ATM fees that you incur during the month, you get them all refunded to your account, which is super, super nice and convenient to get out those pesos at no extra charge. Oh, and on the topic of credit cards, the most commonly accepted cards in Mexico are Visa and MasterCard. So if you have either one of those, that's going to be your best bet for your card that you can use almost everywhere. But look up on your card to see if it charges any foreign transaction fees because most cards charge a 3% foreign transaction fee. But if you can get like a travel credit card that doesn't have any foreign transaction fees and is a Visa or MasterCard, that's going to be your best bet. But American Express has started to be accepted a lot of places as well. And regarding restaurants, another tip I have for you is to make reservations at whatever place you want to go to because a lot of these places fill up very quickly, especially on weekends and especially on Mondays. And you might be like, why Mondays? Well, that's because on Mondays, a lot of restaurants around the city are closed. I call them Muerto Mondays, <laughs> dead Mondays. You make use of open table uh, to make reservations. And if that restaurant that you want to go to isn't on open table, uh, give them a call or go into the restaurant and get your name on the list. Otherwise, you might be going to a grocery store or a taco stand or something for dinner. Although, now that I say that, it might not be so bad. <laughs> Another thing we highly recommend you is to come with very comfortable shoes. Avoid those shoes that you hadn't used before. Try to find uh, shoes that have allowed like an inch of surface, like down surface, and avoid flat shoes and heels. I made one of the mis those mistakes on this trip. I brought new shoes with me and my feet have been really hurting because although San Miguel is really walkable in terms of everything is really close by and you can walk to a lot of restaurants and museums and art galleries and things like that, I mean, trying to break in new shoes has really been kind of painful with my feet. Yeah, and we are not talking about any specific brand of shoes. I, we perfectly know that the best shoes you can use are the one you feel more comfortable with. So at the end of the day, it's pretty important and it's going to make a huge difference uh, about enjoying your trip when you're using the right shoes. Yeah, and I also recommend bringing shoes that have good grip because a lot of these sidewalks in San Miguel, when they get wet, they become very slippery. And I have almost eaten concrete a few times personally. So uh, shoes with good grip are highly recommended to walk around San Miguel. When talking about sidewalks being slippery when wet, this stone in particular right here, this is the kind that gets really, really slippery when it rains. So just be very careful when you're walking around here, especially if it's been raining or if someone's been uh, cleaning outside and the ground is wet or anything like that. Another thing I can recommend you, especially if unfortunately you didn't bring a pair of shoes you're not comfortable with, is to change or modify the way you're walking through this uh, different uh, kinds of surfaces. Yeah, th throughout San Miguel there's lots of different sidewalks with different kinds of slopes and they can kind of be tricky to walk on. Yeah, so I highly recommend that instead of walking normally, you can like give lateral steps. So that's going to be make easier for your foot to adapt to the surface without feeling that you're going to fall or having an injury at your ankles. Something we really love about San Miguel is that the whole town is full of art. Yeah, there are so many galleries around town and murals and cool streets. Like it's, it's not exactly art, but there's like beautiful facades on the buildings and things like that. So yeah, if you're in town, go check out some of the galleries. Uh, like the street we're on right now that's close to the parroquia has a lot of galleries. There's also a place called Fabrica La Aurora, I believe is the name of it, with a bunch of art galleries in there. So yeah, they're all spread out around town, but it's kind of an artist's paradise here. If you want an upside down head for $11,000, you can get it right here in San Miguel. When you come to San Miguel, you're going to want to go home to your Airbnb or your hotel at the end of the day and do a Google search or visit your favorite websites 
and you're gonna find that almost everything is in Spanish. Like for example, you go to yahoo.com and instead of getting news articles from the US, you get news articles from Mexico and everything's in Spanish. Well, on some websites, you can just scroll to the bottom and click uh, switch to English, but a lot of websites make this very difficult or impossible. But an easy way to get around this is to get a VPN. And with a VPN and a click of a button, you can locate yourself to be in the US. And as soon as you do that, all of your websites will be back in English. Now, I've tried a lot of VPNs and they're not all the same. There are some that are way, way better than others. And my favorite, you can find it at tangerinevpn.com. That's my affiliate link and it will take you right there. They're running a sale. It's 83% off plus three extra months free. Again, that's tangerinevpn.com. So if you really like this video, please share it with your friends and family. And click on this video that we recently made together. I think you'll really like that one as well.